Thanks for being here. Thanks for the new subscribers. If you're just stopping by to check out the research for the first time, thank you very much. Welcome. Uh, some big stuff going on this week. Tomorrow morning, I have an interview with Sylvan Otrada, ufologist in France, with ufologists here in the States and Canada, to be able to maybe one day have a universal language that we can understand each other because the ufologists in Canada do, do their own thing and often the ufologists in the States do their own thing. And I'm, you know, trying to bring that connection together because we're all looking for the track. I'll be doing more stars because the days are getting nicer and we will be looking at some messy objects, some deep space objects, definitely. Someone mentioned that the last live stream they wanted to see some of Pleiades. We want to see Mars. And as they're better situated over my head here in Montreal, I'll be catching them for you. Thanks so much for stopping by everyone. Now you guys know I've been doing this for a couple of years now. It's it's going to be my third year by the end of November anyways, by the of August, sorry. But here's the thing. I've been doing this with several telescopes and I'm going to continue doing it with several several telescopes. So these areas that we're seeing here should reappear in the other photos. Um uh, with further um events meaning further moon phases. When a moon phase occurs in a couple of months, these bumps should not disappear. They should always be there. And I'm always showing them. And that's what I'm going to continue to do because it's something absolutely exquisitely beautiful. If you want to know how close we are right now, that white crater you're looking at is about 30 kilometers wide. Now listen, we're pretty pressed up here on the surface, but still absolutely no pixelation. You can see clearly under the haze, there's uh, objects, natural or not. And say to yourself, the camera has 46 megapixels. Listen, try it yourself. You'll be astonished at how much quality you keep in these photos with, um, I hope so, at the price the bloody camera was, the D850 was 5,000 bucks. I didn't even get a lens with this camera. The ones that asked me to see my footage, I showed them. That's the worst of it. And some of you guys trashing me out there never even got in contact with me. I met you guys by the videos you posted against me and you know what it was sad for me because i've never even spoken to any of you so guys we're looking at where all the ufos are flowing around yeah absolutely whether they're biological creatures or ufos i'm very happy to say that i've caught what looks like both because i've seen clouded ufos and when i say ufos it really doesn't look like a ufo and that's why the biological creature had come into the subject at all. We're seeing real objects. So as we're looking around the crater, you can clearly see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all these big massive objects, and that's what I'm trying to clarify. So seeing those large objects that are around uh, Kepler Crater right here, it's not usually seen. It's not seen at all, like in regular footage, because we're just so far away. By getting in, I'm showing the virtual surface. That's why I say it's ground level, because it's the objects on the ground, quite simply. Close up of the edge of a crater, but you see how it really does look like a mushroom top, right? Some of these have slits, what seems like they have slits. Okay, so now we're going to go see some exquisitely amazing Close-ups of the surface, we're going to see the atmosphere on the surface of the moon. Many people get mixed up with the atmosphere that's between Earth and the moon and the one that's actually around the moon. Although I know that they say now the geocorona of Earth is far beyond the reach of the lunar orbit itself, but the moon still has its own atmosphere. John Lear said it, he was right. So we're going to zoom in and see that atmosphere, that haze on the surface, and um, maybe we'll see some activity along the way. Thanks for watching, everyone.
So we're getting in really close and that's what we're gonna do. I'll just keep zooming in and zooming in, but we're gonna go see some nice shots now. We're gonna zoom up. Um, uh, oh yeah, Mare Fecunditatis, just exceptional. Um, near Endymion Crater, we can see there. It's pretty exceptional with this telescope because we have 46 megapixels. So the zoom up keeps absolutely everything. Nothing pixelate. I could even resend it through the editor and zoom up again. And that's what I love about this crater. Uh, about, <laughs> I'm thinking of the crater. That's what I love about this camera. And we're gonna see that. And, and guys, I want you to know, those of you with telescopes that are just starting out and just learning, the difference between the clear shot is everything. If you get a clear shot on a clear evening, every single thing you've seen on the surface is going to be exceptionally clearer and different and very, very accessible for you to zoom in on. And sometimes it only happens once a month, once a year. You have to wait for that moment, but it always happens. Check out these awesome zoom up close ups, guys. Thanks for watching. not able to answer any emails for the next couple of days um you know just a bunch of uh, hacks and crap Houston, say again, please. <laughs>